Dragon Quest has been quite successful internationally over the span of about a few years. With the release of both DQB 1 and 2, the inclusion of Hero in Smash, and the long-awaited release of Dragon Quest XI S finally coming to fruition on September 27, 2019, the future is very bright for the series. However, there was a time when Dragon Quest lost its confidence and never really stepped outside of Japan that much. Let's go back in time a bit. Back to 2012. Or more specifically, the 3DS era. Ah yes, 2012. Back when the 3DS was still in its infancy, Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2 had just gotten its Western localization release. Back in late 2011, and the year Fire Emblem made its grand comeback with Fire Emblem Awakening. Speaking of Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2, even though it was a fantastic game, it didn't sell too well. I was initially confused as to why DQMJ2 didn't sell as well as it could, so I turned to Reddit for answers, as I normally do. This time, I enlisted the help of both r slash Dragon Quest and r slash JRPG. From what I can gather, it was a combination of the fact that the 3DS had just been released a few months prior, the fact that some people just didn't like the Joker series' mechanics, and that people were disappointed that Square had localized the base version of DQMJ2 instead of the much more improved upon an expanded professional version with AI improvements and a ton of additional content. And then there was Pokemon. Pokemon, although it struggled in some areas with black and white, still absolutely dominated the monster collecting genre of video games at the time, and the problems that plague Pokemon now with Sword and Shield weren't as serious as they were back in Generation 5. It also didn't help that piracy for DS games was huge at the time, which was quite unfortunate. There was also one more important factor that played into DQMJ2's poor sales, and that was the virtually non-existent advertising for the game at all. There were maybe a couple ads for the game strewn here and there, but it was nothing when you compare it to more recent times where Nintendo is more than happy to help Square advertise any sort of new Dragon Quest game nowadays. Even the first game, DQMJ1, had more advertising than the sequel. Shortly before DQMJ2's release internationally, the 3DS was shipped out globally, and this marked the slow decline of the DS due to people favoring this new system. As a result, games that were released this late in the DS's lifespan were more likely to suffer from diminished sales. Combine that with the fact that people just didn't have very much appreciation for the Joker series' mechanics at the time, and you've got yourself a recipe for unfortunate sales numbers. DQMG2's poor sales outside of Japan, combined with the fact that some Dragon Quest spin-off games were struggling even in Japan, might have been one of the catalysts that caused Square Enix to lose its confidence in Dragon Quest internationally, albeit for a temporary period of a few years. This loss of confidence resulted in something I'd like to call the Dark Age of Dragon Quest localization. In theory, the 3DS was a clean slate for Square to dust off their knees with their prior rough patch of low sales with DQMJ2, and to give marketing Dragon Quest games globally another go, and to just continue on. However, this was sadly not the case, as Square must have been disappointed with how DQMJ2 and other DQ games performed elsewhere, and instead decided to focus more on the Japanese market for Dragon Quest exclusively, for now anyways. This might not have been the only factor in this decision, but it's still a significant one. This would have been fine, as one could just import Japanese games to their home country with ease, barring lack of funds, that is. But it was soon reported that the 3DS was, in fact, region locked. For those of you unaware, the practice of region locking, or regional lockout, is defined as this by Wikipedia. A regional lockout, or region coding, is a class of digital rights management preventing the use of certain products or services, such as multimedia or a hardware device, outside of certain regions or territories. 
This meant that, if you bought any sort of Japanese 3DS game, but you had a 3DS console that didn't come from that same region, you couldn't play that game at all. This also meant that if you wanted to play any Dragon Quest game that didn't have an international release on the 3DS, you'd have to buy a Japanese 3DS and a Japanese copy of said game and then play it that way. All of these events happening the way that they did resulted in a lot of international Dragon Quest fans feeling alienated, frustrated, and somewhat deterred due to the fact that they had to go through the trouble of importing both a Japanese 3DS and a Japanese copy of new Dragon Quest releases, which was not cheap. With all that background knowledge out of the way, let's start to map out the timeline of game releases that we never got. The first unlocalized Dragon Quest game of the 3DS era was Slime Mori Mori Dragon Quest 3, which was the third installment in the Rocket Slime spin-off series. Back in 2011, this game was followed by the release of Dragon Quest Monsters, Terry's Wonderland 3D, on May 31, 2012 a remake of the original Dragon Quest Monsters game for the Game Boy Color. Next up, we have another DQM game, this time being the DQM2 remake, Dragon Quest Monsters 2, Iru and Luca's Magical Keys, released on February 6, 2014. And then, after that, Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 3 on March 24, 2016, followed by the professional version on February 9, 2017. Finally, we missed out on the 3DS version of Dragon Quest XI, but this one was more understandable as to why we didn't get that version. And that was because we already had the PC version in the West for Steam, which was considered more marketable by Square and the fact that it had more graphical fidelity kind of helped that along. Even though the 3DS had some more gameplay improvements like Tickington and the 2D mode in general, we now have that with the Definitive Edition on Switch. So at this point, the 3DS version of Dragon Quest XI is pretty much obsolete. And with that, the final count of unlocalized 3DS games for Dragon Quest comes to a whopping six games with four of them coming from the Dragon Quest Monster series, three if you don't count DQMJ3 Pro. It wasn't until the release of Dragon Quest VII 3DS that Square gave things another shot with a mainline game, and it did decently well. Same with Dragon Quest VIII 3DS. The main thing that these two games did was to preserve interest in the Dragon Quest series up until the Switch era of Dragon Quest kicked off in 2018, with the release of Dragon Quest Builders for the system. Before we get into the rest of recent history with Dragon Quest, I'd like to talk a little bit about Citra and a group of fans who took it upon themselves to translate some of the 3DS Dragon Quest games. Citra is a 3DS game emulator that is used to play games in the best quality possible and to allow for fan-translated patches of Japanese-only games in a legal fashion. By that, I mean buying a Japanese copy of a game, dumping the files onto an emulator, and then installing an English patch for the game. With that being said, however, I should also mention that I do not condone piracy in any way, shape, or form, and you should always support the official release. Anyways, the fan translation team were responsible for translating Rocket Slime 3, DQM1 3D, and DQMJ3 in English for everyone to enjoy, so that people could still buy and support the official release, yet get the most enjoyment out of their games possible. Sadly, they never could finish translating DQMJ2 Professional, the DQM2 remake, or DQMJ3 Professional. I couldn't find an exact reason as to why they never got around to fully translating these games, but it is widely believed that the fan translation team ran into issues with memory regarding text conversion. In other words, it would take up a lot more memory to convert Japanese characters to English. I had last heard that they had the whole DQM2 remake translated, but they needed someone who could help them implement the text in a memory-efficient way. As of today, the status regarding these fan translation projects is unknown. With the Switch now in full swing, I sadly think these translations will probably never see the light of day. But that doesn't mean that Square and Nintendo can't pull something off themselves with an HD port of some of these games to the Switch with a surprise global release. I guess we'll just have to wait and see for what both Nintendo and Square have in store for the Dragon Quest Monsters series after 11S. 
Heading back to present day, after Dragon Quest Builders 1 was released, Dragon Quest Builders 2 followed in 2019, to great reviews around the board and quite the amount of success everywhere, with it seeing at least 1.1 million copies worldwide sold a while ago, and probably even more at the time of me making this video. Dragon Quest Builders 2 served not only to keep the momentum going for the Dragon Quest series up until 11S's release, but it also drew in a ton of new fans and even more interest. And then, September 27th finally came this year, where Dragon Quest XI-S released to great reviews and a ton of praise from critics, gamers, and reviewers alike. Dragon Quest is at a point where it's never been better, both in Japan and internationally, and I cannot wait to see the future of this series, not just in Japan, mind you, but globally as a whole. To wrap things up, let's talk future games. Although nothing concrete has been confirmed as of yet, Dragon Quest Heroes 3 has been a highly demanded spin-off game by the Dragon Quest community, and we might see it in the future. The new Dragon Quest Monsters game starring Eric and Mia is still in development, and is most likely decently along, or almost finished at this point, so we could see that as a mid-2020 release. And Dragon Quest XII is now in its early stages of development. To top things off, we are getting Dragon Quest of the Stars as an early 2020 global release for mobile phones. Although I and many other people do think that Square and Nintendo have maybe one or two more Dragon Quest surprises to round this year off, like a first look at the next Dragon Quest Monsters game, or a sneak peek at Heroes 3 later this year, for some examples. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, because it helps me out a lot in growing my channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you all next time, everyone. Have a great day.